Hey everybody, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer. I just want to say thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Now the tutorial you're about to watch is a full lesson from my brand new Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 course. You can find more information about that by clicking the link in the description. But I also have a free gift for you just for watching and checking out this tutorial. Click the link in the description and you can sign up to get my free Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 guide. All right, let's waste some more time. Let's get to it. Okay, in this lesson, I want to talk about take recording and comping, which is, I think, very easily the best feature of Live 11. If you've ever recorded in Ableton Live 10 or previous versions, you're really, really going to love this. So I've got my Ableton Live session set up. Um, I'm just going to record a couple of guitar parts here, um, and let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so that's my first take. I, I want to try that again. Um, now, in previous versions of 10, I would have to do something with this audio so that I don't lose it. Um, but I'm just actually going to hit record again. Okay, so let's try another take. <laughs> Okay, so again, uh, if we're using Live 10 or an earlier version of Ableton Live, um, all of our parts would have been lost. But what you can see when I dig into this now, look what we have here. We have both of those takes that I previously recorded available to me. Now, let's start to dig into uh, what this is and, and how we make this happen. Uh, when you're recording, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have show take lanes enabled. So you can right click on a track in arrangement view and enable or hide show take lanes. A couple things I'll mention. Um, one, there's a keyboard shortcut for that, which is one of our new ones, which is command option U. It's going to show or hide our take lanes. Uh, one thing I'll note though, is make sure that automation mode is disabled. If that happens to be enabled, you won't be able to see uh, your take lanes. That really caught me off guard uh, the first time I tried that. So what I have is my two take lanes and what those two take lanes are, our individual recordings, uh, both of the takes that I did, right? They are all stored right there. So I could fold my track up and those disappear, um, or I could leave my track unfolded. And again, I could hide uh, command option U or right clicking to show or hide take lanes. Now, to hear those individual recordings, uh, I could select this and uh, enable this button here, which is gonna allow me to audition the take lane. And that just basically means I can audition that particular take that I recorded. Now I could go down to this one, instead of pressing the button this time, let's press T, which is a brand new keyboard shortcut. And by pressing T, I'm auditioning that take, okay? One thing I will mention, that keyboard shortcut will not work if you have computer MIDI keyboard enabled up here. So if you happen to be pressing T, uh, and it's not letting you audition the take like this, go up to computer mini keyboard and disable that. Okay. Uh, so we can audition takes and audition parts to basically hear uh, which of our takes do we like the best. Okay. Um, and then once we figure out which part we like, then we can start the process of comping. So a couple different ways to comp. Let's say, uh, and we'll talk about a couple different ways to audition and record as well too here in, in just a moment. But let's say I really like this particular portion of, uh, of this part, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is select this part and a couple different ways to comp or to place our selection in what's called the clip lane, and I can hit return. What that means is I took this part of uh, the clip and I put that up in what's right here. It's called the clip lane now. Let's say I like this part of, uh, of this take. So I'm going to select that, I'm going to press return, and that's going to place that selection in the clip lane. Uh, visually, it's really easy to see you know, what I'm hearing at, at a particular part. Um, I love the way Ableton um, uh, set up comping as opposed to having to go somewhere, some random other menu that doesn't really make tons of sense. Um, it's just right here in front of me in arrangement view, which I think is super great. Um, now, one thing that's great is the ability to disable snap to grid. Uh, works and is incredibly helpful here. So for instance, let's say I just want to grab this particular note, this like segment of it, and then I want to go back. Um, or let's say we've got this one. Let's say we want to grab the note right here in this take. Uh, if I do this, I mean, that's not the end of the world, but I want to get a little more precise. By default, as I drag, 
um, it's going to choose whatever my grid is, what, whatever my grid is set to, which in this case is 64th notes. But I want to disable snap to grid. So I'm going to hold command and I'm going to drag and I'm going to actually just find the last segment there. Let's go beyond it and come back. Right. And I just want that particular segment. Now, once I've selected it again, I can hit return to place that selection in the clip lane, which is really great. Now there's another way, again, if you're doing vocals or drums, I think this, this other way might be really helpful um, to find particular parts is I can press B, which is going to enable draw mode. And I can freeform just kind of select what different sections I can draw basically what parts of what takes I want. So let's say uh, for whatever reason, I want this section of this take here. Again, I'm gonna hold command, okay, just to do this a little uh, more precise. And then I want this section of, of this note, which I already have that. I'm gonna hold command, select, select this section of that note, right? Uh, and then let's say we want just this note, so let's hold command to kind of get this really precise and then select that as well too. So we can select our parts, press return to place the selection in clip lane, or we can actually use draw mode as well too, which is really, really nice. Now, um, this is a great way again to start comping parts, but as you start to get into kind of the nitty gritty, it's possible you wanna audition and basically like toggle between parts. Now, we did talk about pressing T, which again is gonna audition our take lane, um, or pressing the audition take lane button. But again, once you get into the nitty gritty of the part, you need a way to kind of do this really quickly. Again, Ableton did not disappoint with, with this option. Uh, I'm currently in draw mode. So let's say I wanna hear this part right here. So I'm gonna press uh, space bar. Okay, and let's turn off our metronome. I'm just gonna hear this note. Okay, but let's say I wanna hear what the other take sounds like. When I'm in draw mode, I'm just gonna click down here. Okay, I could click up here. And I'm essentially toggling through different takes. I'm pressing space bar to start and stop. And then just with draw mode with a, a time selection made, um, I'm just clicking to the other take to figure out, do I like this one or do I like that one? Now we can do a similar thing. Let's get out of draw mode. Um, let's say I'm you know, working on this particular part right here, okay? So uh, I wanna figure out, is this part better or is this part better? So what I'm gonna do is highlight this, okay? Uh, I'm gonna press command. I'm gonna do my arrow key up and down. And you can see as I'm doing this, watch up in our clip lane here, you'll see that it's actually pulling those different parts. So again, I can press space bar. Okay, now I'm gonna do command, arrow key down. Okay, I think I like this one. So um, auditioning parts is, is really, really easy. And again, this is really helpful when you're kind of in the thick of things, right? When you're trying to figure out uh, which is the best part, pressing command and moving your arrow keys up and down is gonna be really, really helpful. Now, you may wanna fine tune this even more. If you put your mouse over to kind of the left of the selection, we get this classic Ableton Live uh, line with the arrows up and down. And as I drag this, I'm basically figuring out kind of where the, 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 the switch between takes is happening. Again, if I hold command, I can freeform drag this. And I could basically say, okay, I want this take to go here and then switch over to the other one right there. Um, and so that's really, really helpful way to, again, do take recording to grab the particular uh, comp or version or take that I like best. A couple other things we could do with take lanes, we could rename them. So I can maybe call this uh, base movement. Uh, I could call this just straight chords if I wanted. Uh, this could help you label the individual takes so you get a sense of uh, which one you like more. Um, or I could go in and I could delete this if I wanted. Um, just selecting a take and deleting. I can bring that guy back if I want to. Uh, and again, we can move these take lanes as well, which is really, really helpful. Now, um, that's, I think, a, a really kind of quick deep dive look at comping and take recording. I want to show you two other ways that we can uh, basically uh, put this into action. Okay, so let's go back over uh, to our song and I'm going to just jump ahead just for a moment. I'm going to basically record the same part, but this time I want to do a looped recording. So I'm going to select, let's see, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to select uh, five measures. I'm going to do Command L, which is going to loop. And I just want to record this loop continually. Okay, so here's my guitar. All right, I'm going to jump ahead of this section. Okay, I'm going to turn, let's turn my metronome back on. Jump ahead of this. Let's hit record. Here we go.
Okay, so you can see even doing uh, just recording in a loop like that is really, really helpful because it's going to allow you to just continually play that part over and over and over again. Now, <clears throat> don't do what I did. Leave yourself a little more room, maybe on the front end and back end of this. So if you need to sustain a note, uh, you can, but you can basically set your loop brace and just hit record and record over and over again. I think this is really a helpful feature if you're a solo producer, if you're someone that uh, you're a musical genius and you can play drums, bass, guitar, and you wanna just figure out a part, you can just do loop recording and capture every single take that you record you don't have to go back and forth between the control room um, and the live room uh, if you have that. Or you don't have to get off your drum set and go back over to Ableton to start over again. Just set your loop brace, record over and over again, and you're going to be set. Again, this is one of those features that Ableton does really well because it lets you focus less on engineering and the very technical things and focus more on the creative, which is just plain. So loop recording is really, really beneficial and helpful. Um, but let me show you one other thing. Now, let's say I like this part. Let's say we want to delete this take. We don't particularly need that one. Uh, and I want to grab this. I want all of that. Let's just pick and choose a couple pieces really quickly here. Um, I want to get this chord, uh, this last chord. I'm not happy with any of the takes with that. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to punch in uh, to just grab that chord. Okay. So what I'm going to do is set my loop brace here. I'm going to actually disable loop. I don't want it to loop now. I'm going to turn on my uh, punch in. Uh, switch here okay so what that means is it's gonna just play along right when we get right here it's gonna punch in and start recording now if I had content after this I would enable my punch out point as well but I'm just gonna grab that last segment here one of the things that I learned uh, when I did a lot of studio tracking and recording for guitar was whenever you're punching in to a section start playing sooner so you try to match kind of the volume, the amplitude of what you're doing. Don't just start right then and there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is do that, basically. I'm gonna jump back here, and I'm just gonna play along, and then I hit record. Watch what happens. It's not gonna start recording, okay? Now, I kind of missed that because I was busy talking. So let's try it again. I'm gonna jump back. Uh, again, I'm gonna hit record, go a little previous to that. I'm gonna play along with it, okay? Hit record, we're not recording yet. Okay, great. I think this might be the one. So what I'm gonna do now um, is let's just play this in context. It automatically grabbed my last take. I think this is gonna be the one. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, I mean, perfect. Perfect transition, everything was great. So I can delete this particular take. If I wanted to clean these up, I could go in and add, uh, apply a, a greater crossfade, command option F, right? If I wanted to, to fade between takes or if I needed to. Um, but again, a lot of really, really cool things we can do with comping and take recording. Um, and so, um, spend some time doing that again. I think the best way to do this is just plug an instrument in, plug a vocal mic in. If you happen to uh, be a singer, record yourself, try this again, try just recording individual takes, um, try loop recording, try punching in and punching out. Um, just do some different versions of that. And you're really going to understand this now. Um, again, that's a look at take recording comping. In our next lesson, I want to think about this in a bit of a creative way. I want to talk about comping as a sound design tool, especially when you're creating beats, creating uh, maybe a drum part, something like that. Uh, comping isn't just for recording. It's also uh, great for sound design. We'll talk about that next. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. As a reminder, don't forget about that free gift that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Click the link in the description to download that for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content, start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody.